The Lagos State Government has directed all students in public and private schools to stay at home following the tension generated by the anti-SARS protest. The Commissioner for Education, Folashade Adifisayo, gave the directive on Monday, saying the safety of students, parents and all staff working in schools was paramount at this critical period. The new date of resumption for the classes will be announced as soon as possible. And joining us live is Bolaji Osime, CEO of Global International College Limited. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. You quickly share with us, how has the protest impacted school owners, especially um, as many of them haven't fully recovered from the effects of the pandemic? Absolutely. Um, we've been shut down for six months. And basically what happened is that we just, we just resumed September. And now the protests have come and we, we have actually stopped um, school about a week ago. And the reason we did this was that parents were finding it difficult to bring their children to um, school. And they were getting stuck in traffic. And we felt that there was a little bit of issue with that. So we had to ask the students to resume online. The beauty about this is when the pandemic hit, at least most of the schools that I know went online. And which tells us that going forward in Nigeria or any nation for that matter, we have to be ready that during a crisis, we have an alternative where our children can continue to learn. In Global International College, we have not had a problem. All they we ask them to stay online because we have been running concurrently physical and online classes since resumption in September. So all we did was ask the students who are physically present to go back home and continue online. So there's no break in learning at all. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of um, technology and ensuring that the infrastructure is present in schools. Of course, the challenge will now be with the public schools, you know, because they will have to now resort to the radio and to other means that they're using, you know, which also has its own issues. But basically, when there's any crisis or there's a problem or there's a virus or whatever, school owners have to be ready to ensure that learning continues. All right. And this I, is I want to move somewhere now. else. Yes. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a big conversation to you know, be had with regards uh, on the discussion on online learning. Um, not very many schools will be able to you know, get that going. But let, let's move in a different direction. Um, safety, of course, is the core um, and most important part of, you know, taking the kids uh, to and fro uh, school. Um, but what would your response be to the young teenagers and parents who want to take part in the protests at a time like this? The students who are taking part in the protests? The, the, the students, the teenagers and parents who are interested in taking part in the protests. Um, everybody, you know, this is a, this is a democracy. So everybody has a right to speak. And I think one of the challenges the uh, next generation, younger generation has had with our generation is that we saw a lot of things and we didn't speak up. You know, so I definitely encourage people to voice their opinions and to speak up. If they, I mean, I encourage my students for that, for, for that matter. So if teenagers or parents want to join a peaceful protest, the important thing is the operative word is peaceful. Peaceful protest to talk about what you feel is wrong and needs to be addressed. We have spoken up for education for so many, in so many forums. We didn't necessarily go out and protest about it. But we had opportunities to speak to government that the education sector is in a crisis. And now the younger people who have now found their voice, who really are the ones 
been affected the most when so many things are not in place. For example, the ASU strike has stopped them from going back to university when every other person had resumed in, in university. So they have to talk. It's about their future. You know, and it's, it's really for the government to listen carefully to the young people and then address these issues holistically to ensure that we are talking about our future. These young people on the street are the future of Nigeria. We are all going to go one day, and they're going to have to take over Nigeria. So they need to have a voice in the government of this nation. Whatever we're doing now, it is time to hand, on, hand over the baton. It's time to bring them into the picture. And because they felt neglected and they were not consulted, they took the natural course of going out there to say, look, we want to be part of Nigeria. We are Nigerians, we're not Americans. And therefore our voice has to be heard. So anybody that feels really badly should go and you know join the protest okay. and speak up. And hopefully the government will understand the seriousness of what is going on. These young people have been neglected. You know, they have not, nobody is speaking for them. They have a right as Nigerians to, to be part of everything that is happening in Nigeria. Whether it's government, to wrap it up whether here. it's the economy, whether it's education, whether it's health, they must have a voice. Well, I so I'm definitely, you know, pro anybody that, you know, old people, young people, everybody. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and um, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Absolutely.